We're not in an age of gender equality. Straight white women in the West are the most privileged class in the history of our species. You can only create this gender gap when you take a broad brush across all genders, all sectors, all work. I'm a feminist and I'm proud <laughs> to be a feminist. And a lot of what you say... That's OK. I'm sure, I'm sure they'll cure you soon. Feminist is cancer. Thank you very much. Aquí viene lo bueno, jóvenes. Go! The question posed to us today was whether um, we've reached an age of gender equality. I don't think we have. We've overshot the age of gender equality by a long stretch, and men of your generation are going to be the primary victims of this error. In secondary school, you will have experienced a system that, tilt that is tilted <coughs> against boys. Your exams will have been primarily modular, not linear, a system that favours girls. Teachers will have tried to control and pathologise your boisterous behaviour, branding you young offenders for pranks or cyber bullies, for typical male teenage trash talk. Taunting, after all, is how men bond. And then when they do get to applying for those jobs, they will, you will be discriminated against just because they're a girl. You'll be the recipients of nothing. I mean, the point is, the, the gap is there still, and older women in particular suffer more from it from younger women. We shouldn't just leave older women, you know, to flounder, should we, just because they were part of a generation where no, it was even I'm more difficult for them to get on. I'm making a specific explanation about where these figures come from, and you haven't really addressed the, um, the point that I'm making. What I'm saying is that you can, you can only create this gender gap when you take a broad brush across all genders, all sectors, all work. That doesn't reflect the different choices people make. And employers aren't, you know, um, don't, shouldn't be forced to pay a full-time salary to somebody who works part-time. You haven't come up with a solution to that, and you haven't addressed the problem with the figures, which is that no serious economist treats the gender pay gap as a problem to be solved. No economist thinks this is a problem because they realise what I'm, what I'm is explaining. Is that male economist which... or female economist, just to be clear? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, the, where I get my, most of my figures on this from is for a, from a feminist female academic, Christina Hoff Summers at the American Enterprise Institute in the US. I've taken some time out of my busy schedule, being fabulous and doing my hair, to prepare a speech for you. Well, a few remarks, really. Feminism is cancer. Thank you very much. But don't, don't, they, don't the left, the, even the so-called moderate left, have the same underlying beliefs as they do? You know, the idea that, that all the problems of the world are, are caused by white people, white males, white imperialism, capitalism is evil, and all these Marxist culturally and economic views. Yes, the left doesn't like precisely those things that uh, have made America a tolerant and wonderful place to live. I mean, democratic Western capitalism is what has you know, provided women the vote because the market understands that it's better to have these people in the workforce and, and to have them participating in democracy and participating in, uh, you know, in industry. It's why yeah, it, it's, it's Western democratic liberal capitalism that has given you know, all of these minorities the, uh, the rights that they now enjoy. Where, where you don't have those systems, people tend to you know, be a lot more miserable than they are here. Uh, the left doesn't like America very much. It's why you see a sort of unholy alliance between between feminist and Islam, because they basically have the same analysis of this uh, cishet, white, patriarchal, uh, capitalist, you know, overlord uh, yeah, analysis of America. It doesn't have much relation to the fact institutions and principles on which this country was founded, you will very quickly discover that women, minorities, gays are the first people to suffer. The universities have started to go along with it. They have started to respect students' uh, points of view when the students claim that they have been emotionally traumatized by different opinions. And the trigger warning in safe space culture has started to take root even in the best institutions in the country. Um, my view on this is that anybody who asks for a safe space or a trigger warning should be immediately expelled. They have demonstrated... <laughs> They have demonstrated that they are incapable of meeting the requirements of their course. Why are you here? Why are you here if not to discover new ways of looking at the world, to discover thinkers and ideas, his history, stuff you never imagined um, that was possible, to broaden your intellectual horizons? If you're not prepared to do that, go home, leave, don't be here. All right, sweetheart. Criminologist Dr. Richard Johnson from the University of Toledo, you want some facts? Here are some. Based on the 2012 numbers, it would take 40 years worth of blacks killed by police to equal the total number of blacks murdered by, murdered by police in a single year. 900 people have been killed by cops in 2016. 47% were white males. Only 24% were black males. Black males are not killed out of proportion, especially considering that they're much more likely to interact with cops. At university, you will be told that you're rapists in waiting, that you need to attend consent classes. Your natural love and affection for women will be neutered. You will be faced with an impossible choice. Suppress your natural, healthy romantic interest in women or risk a charge of rape or sexual harassment. If you speak out against this hostile and unfair environment, you will be persecuted by rabid mobs of politically correct lunatics, as well as the full force of the establishment media as well. He 
was clearly saying all men are potential rapists because he was saying he couldn't control his own sexuality. Now, why have you bought this view of yourselves? Those of you that think it's fine for a man to grab a woman, squeeze her nipple and shove his filthy tongue down her throat and for her to feel fine about it because she's not a special snowflake. In what way is that all right? You're addressing people in the hall like anyone thinks that. You said, you know, in what way, why, who, which among you have, have, you know, taken on this point of view of, of uh, you know, of, of we're all potential rapists? I don't think anybody here has. You obviously spoke to a disturbed individual. That's not reflective of all men. No, it's not. It's and not this, reflective of all men. This and, is exactly and my this, point. And the fact that... The this fact, is exactly and my the point, fact, Milo. And the fact that he's not representative of all men is why some of us prefer data to anecdote. I work as a teacher and tutor and I am really passionate about encouraging young women, uh, girls at school to study science, to go into sciences and there's still an environment where a lot of young girls still feel that science isn't for them. There's a historical um, reason for that. Uh, back in the Renaissance time women were told that their brains were, were too soft to have a powerful skull, that exercising our brains would shrink our ovaries. We're still coming back from that and we're in an environment where we're desperately trying to dispel these stereotypes, to dispel the image that science and math is more for boys than it is for girls. But the fact is that there, are, so, there is some reason to suppose that, some, that, uh, that there, are, there is an advantage to being a man in certain subjects. There's reason to suppose that gender essentialism, biological determinism, whatever you want to call it, the fact that there are male brains and female brains may indeed have some basis in science. Now this is sort of thrown out of the window completely by, by feminists and female academics who just refuse to accept that there's any reason whatsoever why there might be a gender imbalance. Two things on that. One, actually the science is very much still out on that. And two, if you look at equality in society, if you look, for example, at Bangladesh versus Norway, what you notice is the number of women in science and technology subjects actually goes down as societies get more equal because women simply don't make the same choices that female academics and feminists would like them to. Women actually don't want to go into the sciences um, on the whole, and when they have every option available to them, they tend to choose not to. Black males are 58% of those killed legally by private citizens in self-defense. You might think that's an aha moment about racist whites, but 75% of those were killed by other blacks. The fact is that people don't get radicalized by people on their own side. You don't get pushed to the far right by people in the center right like me. You get pushed to the far right by looking at the behavior of the far left. Feminists create men's rights activists, not me. Uh, you know, <laughs> this is a central, this, this, this is just such an obvious fact. You do not become a far-right, white, ethno-state, Jew-hating, alt-right monster because you listen to Milo and Candace Owens. Mm -hmm. You become because you look at the behavior of the far left and you seek to invert it and to become its opposite. And you seek to beat it by imitating it and becoming a mirror image of it. I'm a feminist, and I'm proud to be a feminist, and a lot of what you say... That's okay, I'm sure, I'm sure they'll cure you soon. No. There's, there's chemotherapy no, for no, that. No, 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 no. What... <laughs> I suppose, of course, everyone is entitled to a view and to free speech, but the issue that I have with you, and I suppose a number of critics have with you, is that you seem to just stir up hate for the sake of it, because you want to get a reaction, because you want to provoke, and you don't seem to then take the consequences for that. I don't think it's fair to say I stir up hate. I mean, it's very difficult to describe yourself as not a feminist if you're in public life, and that's an enforcement of a particular political orthodoxy that is not shared by the majority of the public. I mean, very few women describe themselves as feminists, fewer than one in five in America, just 7% in England. I'm sure the numbers for Australia, being a very sensitive, uh, very sensible country, are about the same. You know, the, these ideas that are being enforced in popular culture and on TV are not views reflected in the public. And the gap between the media and people at home is growing all the time. That's my insight and that's what I, I seek to expose and ridicule and have fun with. You wrote a scathing review about Ghostbusters. I thought it was quite, well, quite measured. It's just everybody else was lying that they liked the movie when nobody really did. And then what happened? So I exchanged some words with Leslie Jones, one of the one of the leads who I was unimpressed with, like I was unimpressed with all of them. I cracked some jokes. I was mean and bitchy like I always am. And if I crack a few jokes at a Hollywood megastar's expense, so what? What about an apology? for maybe what your followers, because what Twitter has- Absolutely not. Has my purpose is to throw, is to lob bombs. My purpose is to be a fire starter, right? In an outrage culture, I think the appropriate response is to be outrageous, because what I want to do is smash political correctness. I don't want everyone to be like me, but I think it's important that there are some people like me. I will continue to be as offensive as possible. I mean, there's the one respect in which identity politics is brilliant. You know, um, as, a, as a gay man or a lesbian, you can basically get away with murder. You can be bitchy, you can be sarcastic, you can be rude and abusive, and you can do whatever, whatever the hell you like, and nobody complains. Women, I think, really, you know, 
until very recently, until possibly the last half decade, it was certainly true that women had all kinds of structural disadvantages in society. That simply isn't true anymore. Um, it's not true, for example, when women go for, for jobs in, in science, technology and uh, mathematics. You know, a study came out, I think, two or three weeks ago in the US saying that women have a two to one advantage over men with the same qualifications because everyone's so desperate to hire women. FBI statistics, black men overwhelmingly murder other black people, whites overwhelmingly murder other whites. That's not the narrative from Black Lives Matter. Looking at overall violent crime, blacks are 27 times more likely to attack whites than vice versa, and eight times more likely to attack Hispanics. That's a shocking number, I hope you take away from my visit. 90% of blacks that die from murder die at the hands of other black people. If you do happen to land a job, a single inappropriate remark or a single accusation or, uh, of an inappropriate remark or any unsubstantiated allegation can destroy your reputation forever. Despite all this, I'm not worried for you, because you're men. Throughout your education, you will have been fed a grim history of what men have done through the centuries. You'll be told that straight white men are worse than the Nazis. You'll be told nothing good about your sex, your race, or your orientation. But I'm going to tell you something good, and it is if the patriarchy exists, women should be grateful for it. It is what took us to space. It is what builds roads, build roads. It is what built the internet. It is what protects and provides for women. Uh, if it exists, thank God it does. With their strength and determination, men have tamed the wilderness. Men built cities and walls around us. They built the buildings that we're in. And whenever you know, feminism rises up and tries to ridicule you, to demean you for what you are, we're not in an age of gender equality. Straight white women in the West are the most privileged class in the history of our species. But you'll be fine.